Friends, welcome back to the Brave New Wear Show. My name's Christian. Take a look. We are back in my Brooklyn apartment. But unfortunately, for a short period of time, I am currently packing up the apartment and I will be leaving Brooklyn for the time being. Uh, it's emotional. It's kind of, uh, there. you know, there are a lot of things I've been thinking about and potentially I will release a video on the Patreon kind of talking about my musings about leaving New York, at least for the time being. We'll see. But while I am packing, I'm kind of busy, but I figured I still wanted to make some content for you guys. And uh, as I was packing up my clothes, I came across this. It is the first and only garment that I have designed and made, well had made. And it's kind of funny. I mean, there's a lot of it that is derivative and maybe over the top, maybe over designed, but I'm still pretty proud of it. And I, I thought today I could kind of just talk about this jacket, my influences, and what it was like to kind of come up with a garment because I mean, I know some of you guys might be studying fashion. Um, other of you maybe just are interested and you know, I always considered studying fashion in college or becoming like a fashion designer, but I didn't pursue that, that path. But there is still a part of me that loves the idea of creating, creating something that is authentic in mind. And that's kind of what I did with the jacket. But let me kind of walk through how this piece came to be. And I had this made a few years back, actually, a couple years back, maybe four years ago, potentially. So this jacket came to be after I, I don't even know how I did it, but I discovered this Indian website that made leather jackets. And primarily they made replicas of like high-end jackets. But I saw on the website that they basically would take an order for whatever you wanted. If you could describe the garment in measurements, uh, they would make it for like $300, which I thought was an incredible deal. Of course, why not? It, it not only gave me an opportunity to have a leather jacket at an affordable price, but I had the chance to make it exactly the way I wanted to, which seemed super dope. I, I don't know, why not? And uh, you know, I had a lot of, I had a lot of ideas in terms of what I wanted to make. And to give you kind of just briefly what was going through my mind, I was really inspired by Christopher Bailey's Burberry jackets, by Rick, and by Helmut Lang, honestly. And like I said, may, I don't know, maybe this is over designed. Maybe this is, whole thing is kind of crazy. But one of the first things that I wanted was for there to be like this wild, super beige color. I loved the idea of creating a jacket that was like this bizarre, almost like Caucasian skin color. And like when I was communicating with this website and the guys who were willing to make it, I sent them like Pantone colors and I asked like, can you make a leather like this? And they were able to. So that was like step one. And the other thing was, I wanted to get calfskin for the leather jacket. The reason being calfskin is kind of like, it's the material that they use in like shot perfecto jackets. And I just always thought of it as being like thicker and more robust and like more impressive than kind of the alternative being lambskin. In retrospect, maybe that was a bad idea. Um, lambskin can often, in cheap leather jackets and kind of crappy ones, it could be thin or like not really good, but lambskin is usually a lot more supple and a lot um, more flexible. And I really should have thought about that before I made this jacket and they actually challenged me about it. Because one of the biggest, Honestly, one of the biggest issues is that the jacket doesn't really fit me. I took measurements based on a Marc Jacobs leather jacket that I own that is lambskin, 
and I figured that this one would work. I guess, I don't know, maybe I was hoping that it would stretch or it would be okay, but in retrospect, it really should have been either a lambskin or the, the uh, what do you call it? The measurements of my chest should have been bigger because I sent them in everything. I told them exactly how, how wide I want it, how long I wanted it, um, and it was really cool how uh, easy it was to do this. And I'll, I'll try to find the website to link it. I don't know if it still exists, but let me just go over some of the deets. So first things first, <laughs> and like honestly, I just ripped a bunch of stuff from people I liked. I, maybe that's lame, I don't know. I got this like, what do you call this? This wind guard, this uh, the, this kind of like material right at the zipper, I stole from Rick Owens. He does like this big over exaggerated zipper thing and I thought that was super cool. One part of the sleeve is black. Maybe that's silly, but it, it was something that I saw from Helmet Lang's runways and I thought that kind of interested me. And the ribbing was a lot like Christopher Christopher Bailey's uh, Burberry jackets that I thought was interesting. So I wanted this kind of, this ribbing detail on the jacket in a lot of places. Uh, I don't know, I just, I like it. I thought it was like a cool, interesting, like motocross kind of thing. Had to have double zips. And I even got to say like, I want the double zips and I want like the leather pole. On the inside, it even has, see, like a strap system like Helmet and Rick, which is pretty cool that they, they were able to do that and they gave me an internal pocket and an internal pocket with zipper. And then also this hunting pocket thing, which in retrospect is also silly because I, I don't know, I just wanted to have like a big pocket as well, but it's, it's almost impossible to access when you're wearing the jacket. And even like everything down to like this shape, this shape of like the vent or like joint, they were able to listen to me and have it made. And in part because the jacket really wasn't exactly my fit, I haven't worn it a crazy amount. The other part being because it's so, it's so over the top. It is so crazy. It's kind of like a stormtrooper thing, but in a lot of ways, that's exactly what I wanted to create. I wanted to create like a jacket that looked weird and futuristic. And I was able to do so. And there's something really gratifying about that. I mean, you know, it's not like I don't, I didn't make sketches. I didn't send in like a tech pack. I didn't know all these details in part, you know, not knowing is kind of why I screwed up the sizing, but I was able to have something in my mind and send it to people who, based on pictures and descriptions and measurements, were willing to make what I had in my head, which is very cool. It is very cool, and I think that something that is a takeaway from this is something that you guys can kind of take to heart. I think that we often tell ourselves that we can't accomplish things because we don't have the right skill set or we um, would be a phony or whatever it is. But the reality is if we are driven to do so and we can leverage our skills and talents, our connections, you could literally, you could very, almost literally do anything. I was able to design and get a jacket made. If you have the same desire, desire and ambition, you virtually could do the same. You could figure out how to describe a garment and then through a process of contacting people, sourcing materials, whatever it is, you could be a designer. Uh, you know, it, it's like the reality of the world and the internet today is there is so much accessible to us as long as we use the skills that we do have. You don't have to tell yourself that you need to know how to sketch and you need to know like how to drape and like structuring garments and all those things and you'll never be a designer without it. Those things are very important, but if you have the will and you have creativity and you have the, I don't know, the acumen, the capacity to make something like this happen, 
It literally can. So that's a short video for today. Guys, I'm going to follow up soon with a uh, cringe follow up. The video following up my recent cringe video. I'm going to share some of the uh, class submissions from the homework assignment for the last Advanced Aesthetic episode. Um, a lot of really great posts, a lot of really great things that people sent me, so I think you guys are going to be really excited to see it. And, um, yeah, wish me luck, guys. Uh, it's really, I don't know, it's kind of sad leaving Brooklyn, but hopefully not forever. So I will catch you in the next video. Peace out.